In this video, we're going to be taking a look at prime factorization, and I want you to turn your Go Math book to page 243, get out your math journal and a pencil. So let's take a look at the essential question for prime factorization, and it is how do you write the prime factorization of a number? So finding factors of a number, it says whole numbers that are multiplied to find a product are called factors of that product. A number is divisible by its factors. For example, 4 and 2 are factors of 8. And the reason for that is because 4 times 2 equals 8. And 8 is divisible by 4 and 2. So let's take a look at example number 1 on page 243. It says, Anna wants to build a rectangular garden with an area of 24 square feet. What are the possible whole number lengths and widths of the garden? So, in step one, recall that area equals length times width for Anna's garden. 24 square feet equals the length times the width. So what we can do is we can list all the factors of 24 in pairs and list each pair only once. So we always you can always start out with 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 4, 8, 4 times 6. You can also write it as a um, use as a diagram to show the factor pairs. So this is kind of what we've been doing. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8. Whenever the left hand side of the numbers joins in with the right hand side of the numbers as far as order, you know you're almost finished with all the factors. So the only one left would be 5. And we know 5 times 24 or 5 times a number does not equal 24. So we know we're finished with all the factors. So we can see the factors are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. Those are all the numbers that can be multiplied by a num another number to get 24, to get the product of 24. So from here, we can list the possible lengths and widths. So 24 by 1, 12 by 2, 8 by 3, 6 by 4. Now let's take a look at number 1, list all the factors of each number. So this is something that we have done throughout the year, but let's just do a review. So I can say 1 and 21 are factors. We always start out with 1 in that number. 3 and 7. And now my next number would be 4. 4 cannot be multiplied to get to 21. 5 cannot be multiplied to get to 21. 6 cannot be multiplied to get to 21. We already have 7 written down, so now we have our factors of 21. 1, 3, 7, and 21. Let's take a look at number 2. So we have 37. 37 is actually a prime number, so 1 and 37 are the only factors of the number 37. Let's take a look at number 3. Make my ink a little thinner. So we have 1 times 42. 2 times 21. I know 3 can go in 42 14 times. 4 cannot go into 42. 5 cannot go into 42. 6 can. 6 times 7. And there's not any other number between 6 and 7 that we can that can go into 42 because 6 and 7 are right next to each other. And we can see the factors of 42 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 14, 21, and 42. So in order to find prime factorization, the first thing we need to do is figure out the different factors of the number. And now let's take a look at this a little bit further. We're going to look at prime factors, finding the prime factorization of a number. So important, it's important to understand that prime factorization of a number is the number written as the product of its prime factors. So important to understand prime is the key word. For example, the prime, I'm sorry, the prime factors of 12 are 3, 2, and 2. Prime factorization is 2 times 3 times 2, or 2 squared times 3. So let's take a look at, first of all, letter A. It says list the factor pairs of 100, I'm sorry, 240. So these are all the numbers that can be multiplied to get to 240. So we can see all the factor pairs of 240. In other words, these are all the numbers that can go into two, <coughs> excuse me, 240. So 
Now from here, letter B, it says choose any factor pair to begin the tree. If a number in this pair is prime, circle it. If a number in the pair can be written as a product of two factor factors, draw additional branches and write the factor. So, for example, what I want to do is I'm going to take a look at 5 times 48, and I'll start out with that. So we have 5 times 48. Now, I know 5 is a prime number, so I'm going to circle that. And now I can look at 48. I'm going to think 24 times 2 will give me 48. So I break 48 down. And now I need to break 24 down. I know that 3 is a prime number. I'll circle that times 8 equals 24. Now I need to break the number 8 down. 2, so I can circle that, times 4 gives me 8. Oops, don't need to circle 4. And then I can break 4 down. I can have 2 times 2. I can circle both of those because both of those are prime. Now, now that I have two prime numbers, I don't need to break any other number down any longer. So I can see that the prime factorizations of 240, I just like to write my numbers all in order, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And you can represent that dot, or have that dot which represents multiplication. So 4 twos times 3 times 5. So if I multiply 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, it will give me 240. These are all the prime numbers multiplied together, equaling 240. Now we can write the prime factorization using exponents. So I have 2 to the power of 4. Why the power of 4? Because I multiplied 2 4 times multiplied by 3 times 5. And I want you to write that in there as well. So I started with 5 times 480. Now the reflect question is what if, what will the factor tree for 240 look like if you start the tree with a different factor pair? Check your prediction by creating another factor tree for 240 that starts with a different factor pair. So let's say, for example, I start out with 12, I'm sorry, let's say 2 times 120. Let's see what happens. So I know 2 is prime. I can circle that. We're going to break down 120. I have 3 times 40. Now I have 40. I have 5 times 8. And circle 5 because it's prime. 8, I have 2 times 4 to break down. And circle the 2. And then also 4 I can break down to 2 times 2. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4 twos. So 2 to the power of 4 times 3 times 5. So even though I started out with a different factor pair, I can see it did give me the correct answer. So the intermediate steps on the factor tree will, tree will be different. In other words, all these steps will be different, but the final prime factorization will be the same. So it's important to understand no matter what factor pair you begin with, as long as you break all the numbers down to prime numbers, the prime factorization will be the same. Now we looked at using a factor tree. Now we're going to be taking a look at using a ladder diagram. And a ladder diagram is just another way to find the prime factorization of a number. So we can see 100, 132. We're going to use a ladder diagram to find the prime factorization of 132. So the th first thing you'll do is write 132 on the top step of the ladder. We want to choose a prime factor of 132 to write next to the step with 132. So we wrote 2 down. And then we're going to take 132 and divide that by 2. That's going, to, that's going to give you 66. And then the next thing we will do is think about what prime number can be divided by 66. It would be a prime factor of 66, and that will be 2. We'll write that in there. We can do that together. And then 
We are going to take 66, we're going to divide that by 2, and we'll write 33 on the next step. And now we want to think of a prime factor that of 33, which will be 3. And then we think 33 divided by 3 is going to give me 11. And now we need to think of a prime factor of 11, and that's going to be 11. We have 11 divided by 11 is going to give us 1. So you want to keep going through and keep adding to the ladder until you get a quotient of 1 just like this. Now let's take a look at what are the prime factors of 132 and how you can you tell from the diagram. The prime factors are 2, 2, 3, and 11. And how can you tell from the diagram they are written to the left of the steps of the ladder. So taking a look at letter E, write the prime factorization of 132 using exponents. So we have 2 squared times 3 times 11. Okay, let's take a look at number 6. It says complete a factor tree in a ladder diagram to find the prime factorization of 54. Let's take a look at a factor tree. We'll do this together. So the first thing, 54 is 2 times 27. I'll circle the 2 because it's prime. I want to break down 27. I have 3 times 9. I can circle the 3. Then finally I can break down my 9, 3 times 3. So I can see prime factorization is 2 times 3 cubed, or 3 to the power of 3. So let's take a look and see what that looks like using a ladder diagram. And first of all, we're going to have 54 written out, and let's do this together. I'm going to make that ladder, and a prime factorization of 54 is 2. I know 2 divided by 54 is going to give me 27. And then a prime factorization of 27 is 3. 27 divided by 3 is 9. Prime factorization of 9 is 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Prime factorization of 3 is 3. And then 3 divided by 3 is 1. Remember, with a ladder diagram, you continue to move down the steps until you have a quotient of 1. So same prime factorization, even though we did it two separate ways. Prime factorization is 2 times 3 to the power of 3. Now let's take a look at the question. It says, if one person uses a ladder diagram and another uses a factor tree to write a prime factorization, Will they get the same result? And we see from what we just did, yes, there is only one unique prime factorization for every integer greater than 1. So no matter if you use a ladder diagram or prime or a, a uh, factor tree, you'd still get the same prime factorization. Now let's turn to page 246, and I want you to work on number 4. And you can work on that now. So you can see the prime factorization for 402 is 2 times 3 times 67. Now for number 6, I'd like you to use a ladder diagram to find the prime factorization of 64, and you can work on this now. Now you can see the answer for number 6 is 2 to the power of 6. Okay, wrapping up the video, it says tell how you know when you have found the prime factorization of a number. You know this when all the factors are prime and their product is the original number. So this concludes the video on prime factorization. If you have any questions about this concept, please come and see me.